Is it a t- no, it's a movie. Follows an ambitious am- mm-hmm. This is the Invisalign that's not allowing me to do this. <laughs> an ambitious chef as she opens a restaurant on a remote estate where she battles kitchen chaos, crushing self-doubt, and a haunting presence who threatens to sabotage her every turn. It's got a 4.9. So it should be good. Uh, it's not IMDb. far off of... <laughs> Most of the things we watch. Yeah. This I mean, one's got to have, a, what we're going to talk about, it's got to have a pretty high one. Right? It's got to. It's got to have it a high one. It has to. Oh, it oh came my up God. on my feature today. Oh, it does. 7.6. Yeah, that checks out. That checks out. Boy, for horror, that might as well be a full 10. That's a 10. <laughs> That's a 10. <laughs> That's a 10. <laughs> okay. Hi. Welcome to Never Show the Monster. My name is Kelly Attaway. I'm Chelsea Hollander. And today we are talking about a full 10 movie. For horror. Yeah. For horror. <laughs> I mean, for a movie. For us, for a movie. Yeah. This, yeah, for movie? This for a movie. Slaps. This is the substance. Yep. And I just want to say right now, if you. Heavy spoilers? Has there are going to be so many spoilers? If you have any intention of watching this movie, I urge Don't. you so seriously. I know we say this all the time, but I mean it this time. If you are going to watch this movie, watch it before you listen to anything anyone says about it. You need to go in cold. Agree. Do you agree? Okay. I completely agree. <laughs> uh, I know I went in cold. Did you? I also, I had heard positive things and that's how I went in. I yes. heard you should watch it. And I think if I hadn't heard that, I wouldn't have gone and seen it because it mm. didn't, I didn't know anything uh, about it. And yeah. I mean, maybe I would have, no, pro- well, we were looking for a horror movie. So fun, 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 yeah. fun. Kelly and I saw this in person together. Which doesn't happen very often. It was so beautiful. <laughs> Happens once a year about. <laughs> so glad it was this movie. <laughs> yeah, and so we did have our initial reactions in the vehicle afterwards, <laughs> which was a lot of silence, if I'm being yeah. honest with y'all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we sort of treated the movie for the weekend you were here like a, like a jump scare for yeah, each other. Yeah, we did a lot of callbacks. <laughs> We'd be like, have you thought of the substance in the last 10 minutes? <laughs> no, but now that's what we're going to think about for the rest of the night. So good. So fun. Yeah, I had heard that it was good. I knew people yeah. were excited about it. And that was, I hadn't heard anything about it. Yeah. Like, I didn't know that this movie existed, let alone what it was I about. I didn't know anything about the plot. Yeah. Uh-uh. I knew Demi Moore was in it. Mm. And... Quali. What is her first name? Starts with an M. Yeah. Margaret. 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 <laughs> Margaret. <laughs> Margaret. <laughs> Andy McDowell's daughter. Which I didn't realize until today. And I was like, this is crazy. Yeah. I love Andy McDowell. <laughs> I do love Andy McDowell. <laughs> and then I also read that Mar- Margaret Quali. Why can't I say Margaret? Margaret. I'm going to call her Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> We are best friends. We're allowed yeah, to do Yeah, that. yeah, I mean, I've seen her naked like a lot at this point. Well, the boobs weren't hers. So I know the boobs partial. weren't hers. That's crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Margaret Qualley said that her favorite movie is The Parent Trap starring Dennis Aww. Quaid, who is uh, in this film. <laughs> I Which I wouldn't normally say gross. Would I? I don't know. We talked about this do in we the car. We were like, her? has Dennis Quaid been canceled? Do we know? And then I talked about Jack Quaid and how I like yeah. Jack Quaid. And uh, he was in one was of in the cream. screams. Yeah. yeah. Five cream. <laughs> five cream. <laughs> he was in five cream. Yes. Four cream? Yes. No, five. Four five cream, cream is Emma Roberts. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Five cream. Five What's cream. What's three cream? Three cream is a boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> like but not him. 60% of them. 60%? 80%? It is three cream. Three cream is... Because we watched two cream. One of the three. Uh, hmm. Is three cream with Hayden. What, what's her Wait, name? Isn't that with, one with, one of the, with one of the Murphys. Oh, are those the same? Okay. I'm looking up. Is it just called Scream 3? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We oh, are going to talk oh, about the Scream substance. Scream 3 is the one that we did. 
right? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. We did this movie. No, did we, we not did do Scream this movie? 1. We did we did 1997 Scream original as a full episode. It wasn't. But we 1997 was not Scream 1. <gasps> but we watched oh. Scream 3 was in 2000. Oh, but we talked about all of them cuz we, we talked about all of them all in of a shooting the shit. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Based on the cast, I was like, oh, it's everybody. But I guess that they, like, harken back to some things. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Scream 3 is when they're making a stab movie. and That's it. It's okay. got Polly. What's her name that we love? Polly. I'm, I, there's a good chance I've got the wrong name. But I have the right person. I feel so confident. <laughs> I don't, oh, Parker Posey? Yes, thank yes, you. Yes, love Parker yeah. Posey. <laughs> Do love that. <laughs> and it had Jay and Silent Bob. Oh. Hollywood set of Sam 3, the third film based on the murders. What was Scream 2? Oh, college. College. Mm-hmm. College. There we college. go. I'm back. Jerry yep. O'Connell. Yep. 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 We're there. We're there. I was picturing the right movie for Scream 3, and I thought that's the one we did. But we did the college one because I had the chorus. Chorus. Greek. <laughs> <laughs> You're so right. Oh, my Throwbacks. God. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah go check out our them. episodes on Scream. <laughs> we obviously remember them very well. <laughs> well, a lot was going on in the world because uh, one of them we did right after Roe v. Way was overturned. And so it's a pretty 50-50 split episode yeah. on um, horror Sadness. fictional and horror real life. <laughs> so what I've heard right now is that the movies coming out right now are based on that. Because they were all written and decided to be produced at that time. Oh, ha. So that's why we have Immaculate, why we have um, Murder's Mary's Baby prequel. Wait, no. What are we? They, we have a lot of baby ones. The Omen mm-hmm. is that yeah. just like a lot of baby heaven and it being terror, terrible. That makes sense. That makes sense. And, you know, I also feel like we're seeing a lot more body horror than we have in recent years. Mm-hmm. And that's got to be born out of the pandemic, right? Ooh. Hmm. Is it? I don't know if body horror would. I feel like it would be more zombies. This was a very zombie time. Everyone references, mm, that's true. like, people you know would be bit and they would pretend not to be bit. Just like people you know have COVID yeah. and then they cough in your face and you're, like, Ugh. constantly getting COVID. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, if you don't feel good, test, guys. <laughs> Just test. It's okay. Just Not test. all of them are right, but like every time somebody tells me they have a cold, I just get really worried. I'm sorry. They have I'm COVID. Sorry. <laughs> That's what I say. And then I'm like, I must go. Bye. Yeah. See ya. Uh, oh my I, God. I am a very paranoid person. So well, we all know this about me. We know this. You guys have been here for more than one episode. I hope <laughs> if this is new to you, I apologize. I am afraid of all diseases and I will talk about them constantly, which this Movie isn't about diseases, but God, is it fucking gross in it's the best gross, way. But so delightful. Yeah. But, right? <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> it was well, delightful. I there are you just rewatched it today, which I mean I just to rewatch it. it. Oh, so oh, I oh. um but like I cannot get over the experience of watching this without knowing anything know. about it and how <laughs> like if I'm being honest with you, we talked about this like Probably halfway or three-fourths of the movie in, I was like, I don't like this movie. And I'm not going to like the movie. But then the end, I was like, this is the greatest movie ever made. This is is perfect. This is a perfect film. I was like, this movie (laughs) is the best movie. And I have no idea how I lived my life prior to this movie. And now it's going to be before the substance and after the substance. I'm a new person. Same. Just like, forgot her name. Sparkles. (laughs) Elizabeth. (laughs) Yeah. Miss Sparkles. Miss Sparkles. Okay, we should give a description of this movie. But like I said, you should, you should know. It. You should already know. <laughs> if you're listening to this without watching it, we're ashamed of you, and we're you're upset. incorrect. You're incorrect to do that. Unless you're very uncomfortable with body horror, then okay, we'll give you a rundown. And I've got a counter argument to that that we'll it talk was about really in a gross, moment. Though. It was really it gross. It was gross. It was very gross. It's very gross. Okay. 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 How how does one describe <laughs> the substance? It is 
uh, it's a substance. I'll tell you that. It much. is a substance. Um, so but, yes, go. Oh, do you want to try or do you want me to try? <laughs> I can. I can. I can, it, I can try. <laughs> uh, you can go for it. Okay. So uh, the plot is about Demi Moore, who is playing um, a woman named Elizabeth Sparkles, who was like an Oscar winner, A-list celebrity in her youth. And at the time of this film, she is turning 50 and she's still um, starring in like an aerobics TV show that airs every day. And uh, she is essentially asked to leave the show and the studio. She's like put out to pasture, like you're old now. So you have no value to us in the entertainment industry and uh, leaving the studio. She is distraught and she happens to see people taking down an Elizabeth sparkles. um, What do you call it? Billboard. And she's watching that. Uh, distracted, she gets into a car accident, finds herself in the hospital, and one of the nurses in the hospital slips a note and a flash drive into her pocket. The note says, it changed my life, and the flash drive flash drive is labeled the substance. She goes home, puts it in her computer. Nope. TV. <laughs> and <laughs> the thing about this movie is it's hard to pin down when it takes place, but not computer. It Which, feels very 80s. But then but sometimes not. it feels very 50s. Oh, And then yeah. sometimes it feels very now. Mm-hmm. Which I think was a smart move. Yeah. But this uh, flash drive plays essentially an infomercial set to like rave music that advertises the substance, which is a substance you can take. <laughs> For sure. For <laughs> sure. Will, Good to scrape. Yep. Um, that will give you a better version of you. It's still you and you have to remember that, but it is a better version of you. And the deal is younger version, younger version, beautiful, perfect, flawless, Mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and the deal is, uh, you two have to trade every seven days that's how you maintain balance. It's still you. And so you like swap your conscious consciousness in, in and out of your two now bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the promise. You'll have a better life. You'll have a better you um, by our drug. Although it's not a purchase. We talked about this too. Yeah, It's not a purchase, but it is a subscription system. <laughs> that's true. Maybe it's still in the testing phase. It does feel pretty beta, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? (laughs) So Elizabeth Sparkles ends up doing this. Um, She, boy, and here's where it starts to get complicated. (laughs) She, like, splits in two. Mm -hmm. She spawns, she births Margaret Qualley. Yep. Beautiful 29-year-old Margaret Qualley. Mm-hmm. And Demi Moore was 61 at the... Yeah, playing a 50-year-old. She looked young. Fi- she, looked she looked nice. Incredible. She looked good. Yeah. She looked good. Yeah. Uh, which is, you know, part of the experience of the movie. <laughs> Us having yeah. opinions on how she looks. Um, oh, fuck. Well... I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> she did look good. So <laughs> She looked great. <laughs> yeah, so Margaret Qualley is playing Sue. And she goes out and uh, to like a casting call to be the next Elizabeth Sparkles. And she gets that role. Um, Wait, let's focus on the scene where she splits in two. Yeah. For one moment. That, I mean, there is a little bit of body horror whenever you see Dennis Quaid eat food. That's uh, that earlier was on. The worst part. That's the worst <laughs> part to me. That was the most disgusting part. That's for sure. There were so many noises. There were yeah, so many mouth lot. noises. There was shrimp involved. And There's it was shrimp. Just he's like eating shrimp. And he's like waving these limp shrimp around. Yep. Ugh. Which is noises. Bad. And there's butter everywhere. Yeah. And he's spitting it so all like, over the place. That gives you a sense of like, oh, this is going to get a lot grosser. Like that's yeah. like testing you. And you're like, whoa, this is going to get real gross. Um, oh, God. But she splits open, births herself. 
through her back. Yes. And then has to sew up her back. Which, a lot of noises there, yeah, too. Yeah, very noise heavy. But very that was noise like, heavy. I was like, oh, what? I mean, I guess you're not feeling... That's the thing. Do you not feel your second body? I guess you don't. You wouldn't feel your second body ever? But I guess there not, is a scene later are... that would let me believe that that might be true. There is definitely a connection mm-hmm. in some capacity. I don't, I don't think she that we need to know. She heals very quickly, too, after sewing. I just was like, I don't think something can come out of someone's back and then still exist. No, I feel the same way, but yeah. I think that... Um, but I will suspend my disbelief for what happens. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think this is that's definitely That's not a... the weirdest part. <laughs> <laughs> no. This is really a leave your disbelief at the door yep. <laughs> type of situation. Yeah. <laughs> I did find myself during the rewatch today going, what happens if they end the subscription service? What happens if, like, Sue gets hit by a car? While she's out living her life and Demi Moore is just stuck, question mark. What happens? Will anybody go check on her? Nobody knows she's there. Maybe there will be a sequel. I don't know. (laughs) No, I think, I guess maybe, but. Maybe a boy-centered one? Oh, maybe. Yeah. Because men have problems with their bodies as well. Yeah. This movie was very much about the male gaze. Self-image. Oh, I thought it was about just like female self-image. There was like a, you read the part where Demi Moore wasn't considered for the part and then the director read her book and it talked about her like self-image and how she felt about her body and that's why she chose her as the actress. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Do we know who she wanted before or was it just... I don't know. I did read that Demi Moore compared the script to Ghost. (laughs) (laughs) Because she was... She was like, I mean, they're both like high risk, high reward. Okay. Scripts. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> like, she did a great are... job. <laughs> she I did mean, an this incredible was a, job. I have not seen her in movies lately. This was a great choice. This was an so amazing good. choice. So, so smart. And, and like, so if she is writing about it in her book, it's clearly something that she's passionate yeah. about. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, she did grow up in, yeah in the public eye she was so basically she the character like yeah she grew up as an a-list star and uh, academy award winning star but the other part is like this movie wasn't even it was it was brought it had a major studio prior and then it didn't end up distributing it and then movie yeah movie <laughs> distributed it and like and this is the highest grossing film for a movie Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah. I mean, good job, movie. Hopefully this brings really fucking weird stuff out. Like, I ho- hopefully this more. keeps going. <laughs> yeah. I want more. Yeah. This was, um, what, it won Best Screenplay at Cannes. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Apparently it had the longest standing ovation at Cannes, which, how long uh, are standing ovations at, at Cannes like, anymore? <laughs> how can you not do that at the end? I mean, oh, my God. I know. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> so part of why I wanted to... Okay. Let we me keep going through the plot. Let me finish the, like, overview of the okay. plot, and then we will get deeper into it. So we now have uh, the two alter egos of Elizabeth Sparkles. We've got Elizabeth and Sue. And so Sue goes on to replace Elizabeth Sparkles in a new aerobics TV show, but she's young and she's hot and they're like, we want more of you. So that expands and expands and expands. They're talking about putting her in movies. She's on the cover of Vogue or Vanity or one of the... Something. Something. Yeah. And uh, they want her to do the big like New Year's Eve show this year. And they are supposed to one week as Sue, one week as Elizabeth. That's the deal. They are very clear about that in the substance instructions. <laughs> it's in caps. It is in and caps. Bold. It's big. Mm-hmm. Uh, they say things like, no exception. Remember you are one. And remember you are one. Boy, do they say remember you are one. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> so, so sweet important. <laughs> and uh, obviously... Sue starts, you know, pushing that seven days isn't enough. We'll just do eight this time. Uh, Eight days isn't enough. Let me do two weeks. And 
on and on and on. And now every time when they switch back and Elizabeth Sparkles is the conscious one, she has aged drastically. Dramatically. Yeah. Just so <laughs> dramatically. To the but point- it's different parts of her body. It's yeah. not like her entire age. It's not like, oh, we've added on five years. It's like no. one limb at a time gets aged like 50 years. It's bonkers. And mm. then it is the whole body yeah to the Sorry. point that she is golem oh. she's a golem <laughs> and she's like crackling and oh she's uh she's a uh, hunchback now mm-hmm. and oh boy um and so you know things escalate from there <laughs> and they're both calling the company company complaining um, yeah. being like the bitch and they're like you're one stop you're the same person stop. you are you're the same the person you're the one <laughs> um and they both call complaining about the other version of them mm-hmm. until until so uh god it gets gross it gets gross it i'm gets trying gross. to just stick to plot so that we can circle back to imagery but man but I'm having flashbacks. The so. rest of it is just gross. <laughs> the <laughs> rest of here it is just on, gross. it's just fucking gross. <laughs> but so fun. So entertaining. So fun. It's like, you see that shark over there? I bet I could jump it. <laughs> oh, my God. I never thought I would see anything this. I Like, there were so many points from here on. I was like, they're not going to do. Are they? What are oh! they doing? What are they doing? Yeah, what is was happening? Like, <laughs> oh yeah, at no point could I guess what was going to happen uh, next. Absolutely at not. No point. <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah. So I tried to, and I feel like I was like, "Oh, this isn't that movie. Oh, this, this is, is a not that movie. movie. Oh, this my is god. a different movie. <laughs> oh my god." So fun. So yes, at some point, Elizabeth Sparkles wakes up. She's Gollumy. And she is very unhappy. So she calls the company and she's like, I want to end this. We have to end this now. So they send her the termination kit. She tries to terminate Sue, but then has a very heavy handed line. Uh, You have to come back. You're the only good part of me. I hate myself, (laughs) which is, you know, we don't have to talk about how heavy handed that is. That's fine. Uh, So when she quits, she tries to resuscitate Sue, and now they are both conscious, which is not Isn't supposed, supposed to, happen. to happen. No, and they are both freaked out. Mm-hmm. And Sue sees the termination uh, injection and <laughs> attacks Elizabeth, yeah. and there is a long fight scene that is so fun. Yep. Sue, fun. Ends up I don't know fun. if I would say fun. I would say fun. Ugh. Lots of noises. Lots of noises. There are some noises. Lots of squishes. Yeah, that's for sure. But lots of like comically, like anime style shots. Oh, yeah. That's fair. I would, yeah. Like it's just bonkers. And there's no dialogue. It's over the top. Just so so exaggerated. Yeah. It's like kick her and she flies all the way across the room. Like it's insane. It's so fun. Um, However, Sue does kill Elizabeth, mm-hmm. which seems risky. That seems risky. Yeah, if I'm she Sue, has to use – that's another – that's a plot point is she yes. has to pull out her spinal fluid spinal in order fluid. to keep existing. Mm-hmm. And without that spinal fluid, she starts to disappear. Yeah. She, like, gets a bloody nose and, yeah. like, is all disoriented and collapses, things of that nature. So Elizabeth is dead. Sue is – And this is New Year's Eve. So she's got this show that she's supposed to do. She goes to do the show. (laughs) She just killed herself. (laughs) Now she's going to go perform. But she needs that stabilizer fluid. So she's not doing well. Goes to the bathroom. Teeth falling out. This is hard to watch. It's pretty gross. Yeah. Is that where the nails come off too? It's about to. Yeah. She flees the studio. Nails are coming off in the elevator. Ear falls Mm -hmm. off. So she goes home and there's another oh, rule. There is a beautiful moment though as she's trying to leave oh. where they're telling her to smile. Pretty girls should always smile. Oh, I that scene. Know. I know. Okay. 
Let's just talk about that scene because <laughs> from here on out in the movie, it is going it's to be, be hard. Bonkers. We can't explain the plot without talking about the imagery. Yeah. So let's go ahead and talk about that scene because I think that it is such a perfect like um, cherry on the Sunday of mm-hmm. what the movie is about. Yeah. <laughs> because Sue just pulled her teeth out in mm-hmm. the bathroom. Um, she's like washed the blood off her face. And she's trying to leave the building. So she's got her mouth shut, obviously, to hide the big hole in her face. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And Dennis Quaid, who is her manager, comes over with, like, the studio shareholders, who are a bunch of wordless, old, white men who are just peering at her expectantly over Dennis Quaid's shoulder. And Dennis Quaid... First of all, we've established disgusting. The way he eats shrimp. Completely gross. Unapologetic. Mm -hmm. And also the way he treats women. That is also disgusting. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Which, God, this scene is like a perfect vignette because she's trying to present herself as the star of the show. And she is clearly fighting back tears like she's got Mm -hmm. tears in her eyes and Dennis Quaid comes over with all the shareholders he's like is anything wrong she shakes her head no and he says then smile and he's so exaggerated Mm -hmm. he's he's this like almost like um uh in Moulin Rouge do you remember Mm -hmm. the like the ringleader yeah who's very like everything's going so well like as I'm remembering it, this is probably incorrect, and you can tell me. But this is like the visual I get in my head, which is, it's like a fish eye. Like it's like yes, yes. So much of the movie is very like interesting shots like that yeah. fish eye, very disorienting and very like it's honestly how a lot of my mid panic attack memories are. Oh. Like where the the outsides of my vision are like. I don't remember mm-hmm. them clearly, and I feel very small, and what I'm seeing feels very big. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and that's captured very well mm-hmm. at a couple points in this movie. This absolutely is one of them. And so he's telling her to smile, and the shareholders are just like, and they're so weird. They're like tightly packed around Dennis Quaid. Like, it's just a very surreal yeah. moment. They're looking at her expectantly. So she smiles, closed lipped, and Tears are falling out of her eyes. They are streaming down her face and they do not see that. They see the pretty girl that they want to see. And they're like, pretty girls should always smile. And then luckily a bunch of topless women come by. Yes. And distract (laughs) them, which thank God. That's how women get their life is topless women come by to to save them. (laughs) One day I'll be the topless woman to save another woman. That's all we do. And I, that's the I will do that gladly. That's yeah. the sisterhood. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, that's the nightmare we're in. <laughs> that is the nightmare we're in. <laughs> oh, she says laughing. Okay, <laughs> I see those tears, Kelly. <laughs> uh, I do think it's sort of funny that um, Margaret Qualley has one of the those adorable gaps in her mm-hmm. front teeth. So I thought it was funny that the that her teeth come out. And now she's got the largest gap <laughs> the, between her the front teeth. <laughs> the most them. gap. <laughs> oh, she can make God. It work. I she probably could. Yeah. They have um what are they called? Flippers. We can get yeah. a we can get one of those. Yeah, just take her to the dentist, they'll figure something out. I don't know what we're gonna do are about you the ear. dentures. <laughs> I guess dentures, yeah. What are flippers? Are flippers a thing? They are a thing, but I, I think that they go over your normal teeth. Oh, oh. I only know them from Drag Race. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I'm going to have to look that up. <laughs> yeah. I, it's also very possible that I have the name totally wrong. So There are times when I look at people's teeth and I wonder if they have dentures oh. or if there's like, oh, veneers. Veneers. Veneers is what I'm thinking of, not dentures. Veneers. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those go Ooh. over the shaved baby teeth. Are the there ones that go baby over teeth. normal teeth? Because I've always kind of yeah. wanted to. Okay, cool. I think I'm I gonna mean, look this up as something I want to purchase later because I think <laughs> yeah. that that is like 
uncomfortable looking. And hopefully Nate won't hear this before our next episode, <laughs> but I will get some and then I will wear them an entire debut buddies episode and see if anybody says anything. Kelly, you can't. Oh, no, so. I never will. I never would. <laughs> Or if I did, I'd be like, oh, Chelsea, you look nice today. Hi, and then thank you. Not say anything else. Yeah, big, big grin. <laughs> big terrifier grin. But yeah, that's, I think that those are called flippers. They'll like wear them for performances and drag race I and then take them sense. out afterward. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, okay. So before we Fun. get to the, <laughs> to the end of the movie, I think that there's more that we need what to we discuss. Need to talk about? Okay. All of it. And <laughs> wait, do we need to talk about the end or do we need to talk about all of everything that has happened up until now? I think everything that has happened up until now so that okay, we have okay. the full context when we go into the end. Okay, okay. <laughs> because the end is the pinnacle of all, like, not mm-hmm. mo- this movie, all movies. It's the all pinnacle movies. of all movies. Yes. Yes. Um, I, uh... What I is know. there to say? What do we want to say? <laughs> That's this is why we sat in silence, and I was like, I have to digest this, and I have still digested it for a long time, but it's still like it's something that's just going to sit in me forever, forever. Um, I mean, obviously, I don't know. This movie didn't like. There was a lot of close-ups of very like butts and boobs and stuff, um, but I'm trying to think about how I felt about it, focusing on the body because mm-hmm. it is about like feeling uncomfortable in your own body and like and I get that like as a woman I don't know I don't know what woman can't understand that yeah I totally relate to that uh I have all my life for a myriad of reasons but there's a scene in the substance where Demi Moore so she's in the mirror she has been very sad god the mirror scene yes so leading up to that though um, she ends up calling somebody that she knew in high school or middle school or whatever. Uh, she had run into him on the street and he was like, you're still the prettiest girl in the world. And she sort of brushes him off because she's Elizabeth Sparkle, Oscar yeah. winner, star. Um, but after Sue has been, you know, aging her finger yeah. by stealing time, she is looking for that validation from a man and so she calls him sets up a date and ends up not going and there is a moment where she gets to the front door and her hand is like she's reaching toward the doorknob but it just sort of hovers on the doorknob and she focuses in on her reflection in the doorknob which obviously is distorted because it's a round object and she ends up going back to the bathroom and wiping all of her makeup off in disgust. But that moment of like, I don't want to leave the house. I know that feeling so strongly, especially recently, because I, listeners, am struggling with adult acne, (laughs) which is so fucking stupid. I can't believe we make teenagers do this. That should be illegal. (laughs) And uh, for anybody. Yeah, this shouldn't be allowed. Um, It sucks ass. And I haven't ever had to deal with it before. So it's this like new um, insecurity, which is nice. So I have to figure out how to navigate that. But there have absolutely been days when I've woken up and been like, well, I can't leave the house today. Yeah. Because this is not good. (laughs) So that was really relatable. Hashtag relatable. (laughs) That was relatable. Uh, but yeah, when she goes back into the bathroom and wipes all of her makeup off yeah. in like disgust, like visible disgust. And she was so beautiful. Heart. She's so beautiful. Dressed up, ready to go. And I was like, she's finally going to get some. It's going to be great. Yeah, I was like, get out. Get happy. Because <laughs> I was just like, if I was my younger self, I would go out and do that hot girl stuff. And then mm. I would become my older self and I would go knit in front of the TV and do all the fun oh. things I wanted to do that involved not leaving the house. I love not um, leaving the house. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you can have different interests. Uh, you could yeah. go bird watching. You can oh, do a lot fun. of stuff when you're yeah. old and a lot of stuff when you're young. And yeah. you just make the trade-offs. Make the trade-offs. Just be happy in both. I but like. I don't know. Just balance it. Seven days. I've enjoyed <laughs> aging very much. Yeah, so, so far like, it's fine. I'm happy 
not necessarily in the body I'm in. No, which is hate the body. What yeah. this is showing, <laughs> and that's the point. But the interests, I feel like um, it balances. So that was the thing in the movie that I was like, oh, I just balance my interests. Like the things that I did when yeah. I was here. Because I don't go out to things that have crowds now because I fucking hate it. And I'm like, well, if I could not be at a concert with a million people, that would be ideal. But when I was mm-hmm. younger, always at concerts, all the time, making mm-hmm. my way to the front, loved it. Cannot yeah. imagine that today. Feels like a nightmare today. Just a complete nightmare. Huh. I guess my question is... Were you always old? But would you substance yourself? Oh. No. (laughs) No. (laughs) No, I would not have a... I would not birth myself out of my back. Like, if that was available today, I could not. I don't have... I mean, if it was the best... No. No. Hmm. No. I've taken a long time to become the version of myself that I like. And oh, see, I don't like myself. Yeah. So would I the substance myself? Would you the substance yourself? I think Do you I would. think it would bring you joy? Here, here's okay. I I've got two levels of answer okay. here. Now, knowing what the substancing yourself means, I will be friends no, with both of them. I'm not going to do like now that I know what that looks like. No, yeah. <laughs> However. If I were in universe and I just got that flash drive that was like, promise it'll be dope, I wouldn't not think about it. That's fair. And here's my follow-up is they do not provide nearly enough information. No. I need to know, is this FDA approved? I probably would not do it because I wouldn't know. I would be <laughs> yeah. like, what does this mean? If I had known that it would rip out of my back, absolutely yeah, that's a big not. No. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. That's a big no. If I had known, I would have to sew something up. If yeah. I knew that I would be doing a lot of injections. Well, you could sew, you're good at sewing. If it was sewing, I don't know skin if I up. can sew up a human yeah, that's body. <laughs> like, I think I could do like a little wound. So, if you could substance and it would just magically appear next to you, yeah. not birth out of your back. Yeah. I, uh, hmm. but I, I don't know. I, my, I have always been very guilt-ridden since a child. So I think by seven yeah. day, I would do great at that. Oh, I would do so I was, good at that. I was a rule follower to a yep. T. And Big like, time, yep. I even had like a, a pretty solid thought today about how when I worked at a movie theater, there was a guy that used to get uh, buckets of popcorn out of the trash. Mm. And I would get mad at him when he would come <gasps> up and try to get, like, a new bo- new one. And I'd be like, this guy's trying to scam money. No, movie theaters cost so much. He should have been. I'm yeah. a fucking asshole. Like, <laughs> I just was like, rules. I have to abide by the rules. So yeah, I think the seven-day thing, grow. I would, I would, I think I would do all right. I think I would, too. I would also, like, I would have reminders on my phone. I would have alarms yeah. set. I would make a Google calendar for all of the scheduling for the show, like with blocked off out of office. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. I guess if the, if one side of your life is so much more positive and you like don't feel angst or depression or anything as you're this other side, I could, yeah, that's the part. It's Uh like that would steal time. (laughs) Like I could see that completely stealing time. Yeah, that's why I won't do it, because that bitch will steal so much time. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. I'm not going to let that bitch take it. (laughs) It would be nice (laughs) not to feel it, but I don't want that bitch, like, taking, being like, I'm not going to let you exist anymore. Oh, but it is me. I am one. You, Yeah, you are one. I am one. You are the same. There is no she. But she doesn't understand that for some reason. In this movie, she doesn't understand that. I think she understands it, and she doesn't care. Ugh. (laughs) Sue's a bitch. Sue Sue's is a bitch. Selfish. Which I think gives probably a glimpse into what Elizabeth was like when she was younger. But the age is supposed to make you not that way, and that was what it was supposed to do for her. It is very I'm not saying like humbling, but like feeling I don't know. It's like the whole thing with uh, I'm gonna say something and it's probably gonna be, I don't know, Madonna. Like Madonna okay. hating Lady Gaga when Lady Gaga just started to come up instead of just being like Lady Gaga is great. I support her. Like, right. There's space for everybody. Yeah. Like just being able to hand over instead of trying to hold on. Yeah. At some point. Yeah. And I don't think Sparkles was able to do that. I don't think she felt the need to hand over. She wanted to hold on. 
She absolutely wanted to yeah. hold on. And I think that she thought that she could do that by yeah. substancing herself. <laughs> like yeah. it, it was, um, she didn't need the legacy. She needed the adoration. Like mm. it wasn't about Elizabeth Sparkle. It was about the limelight. Elizabeth yeah. Sparkle is just a brand. Now my brand is Sue. <laughs> there was a TikTok. Somebody, they had one name. I think it was Lucky that had talked about the symbolism of the um, fashion in the movie. Mm-hmm. And she talked about how um, Elizabeth Sparkles wore like a bright yellow jacket when she tried to yeah. hide herself and a bright red bag. And like yeah. she was very bright even when she was trying to hide because she mm. still wanted to be important. And they also said there was symbolism of that being the yoke. I, I was going to bring yeah. that up. I didn't think about it the first watch, but today I was like, she oh, the it's yolk. the yolk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the movie opens with a um, close-up of a cracked egg on a blue surface and somebody injects the sub, just a hand comes in and injects the substance into the egg and the yolk sort of jiggles for a minute and then separates into two. And we get that imagery mirrored in the uh, birthing scene. Yeah. In her eyeball. Uh, (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was gross. It was gross. Yeah. And I can't believe we haven't said this yet. This was majority practical effects. What? Yeah. A plus. Love that. Plus. I I mean, the end makes sense that it was. Oh. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Chef's kiss. Oh, God. We're just teasing the end. We're going to get there. I promise. (laughs) But I do want to credit. I think even the, if we um, describe it, it's not going to do it any justice. That was no. You want to credit? Sorry, the special effects people, the special effects designer and supervisor, and unfortunately, he is a Frenchman, and so we oui, we. Oui. I'm gonna do my best here. Pierre, feel confident on that one. Oh, perfect. Olivier. Oh, lovely. O l i v i e r. Yeah. And then we've got one more word in the name. Person. P-E-R-S-I-N? Pierce? I'm doing... Person. Person? Pers- per- I don't know. In French, you don't say... Olivier Person. Yeah, Pierre perfect. Olivier Person. <laughs> if I just you say it, it very quickly. I have we- a friend who is um, like a French professor. I should ask her Ooh. how to pronounce French things. Um, the We also haven't said the um, writer-director's name yet either. Lady. Lady. Love her. Love her. Uh, Coralie Farge. I looked it up. I still don't think I'm saying it right. But I did my best. Close to Fabergé. Like the egg. Ooh, how is that That's spelled? That's the only is it thing the same? I know. I have no idea. She is also French. Um, I guess this was like this movie. They kept saying that it was a joint effort between the U.S., France, and the U.K., and I was like, aren't That's all weird. movies pretty international at this point? Like, what does that mean? And I didn't. I think uh, they're mostly U.S. I guess that's true. But like we film in other countries mm-hmm. so many times for the tax break. But do we give a voice often to foreign directors? That's a great point. Which I like that we're doing and we do it more often. And the Oscars are acknowledging that. So that's good. Do we think that this movie will get any Oscar noms? Uh, I was going to say absolutely not. I think it's not going to. I would love for it to, but I don't think... I think it affects. Effects would be the thing that I would want to give it. Uh, give to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But honestly, fucking Demi Moore. She did Give great. her another one. She did great. <laughs> like, she did so who, good. Who would be up this year? Oh, I don't know. I think a lot of the... I only watch horror movies, so I can't. Yeah, just like... <laughs> I'm not going to know anybody. Oh, that one movie that we watched, Poor Things. Wait, no, that was last year. That was last year, and it won Ooh, for costume. Okay. That and, makes sense. Yeah. Actress? Did Maybe. she win? I can't remember. I can't remember. I hope so. It's been so. a year. It's been a year. <laughs> it's been a year. <laughs> no, I think a lot of the Oscar movies um, are only just now coming out. Okay. Just based on trailers. Oh, because they happen during, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think Oscar bait is is now anywho so the ending oh god this is such a good such a theater, good theater movie going experience um yeah i recommended it to a friend of mine who um 
is on her horror journey. She's figuring out where her horror limits are. Okay. This is a questionable one to suggest. This is a questionable one. So I I what messaged her today. Her? I don't know. Okay. Your guess is as good as mine. Okay. okay. <laughs> so. What are her traumas is my so then we can align with what's probably the most scary. Joke. I know. Here's the trouble. Oh, no. Bodies. Oh, <laughs> she, no. She was a dancer. So oh. she's, that's a big this thing might, for her. This is going to be one that, this is going to be a dark and the wicked. <laughs> it could be. So here's my counter argument that I mentioned earlier. And this is what I told her. Um, and if I am super wrong and off base, I need you to tell me so that I can message her before she comes back from Japan oh, and God. tries to watch it. Okay. <laughs> so I messaged her and was like, saw it again, still slaps. Uh, hell yeah. And she was like, oh, I don't think I'm going to watch that one. And I immediately was like, but it is so delightful and gleeful. I was like, imagine me kicking my heels and clapping in the theater. Like, it is so fun and she was like that's not what i expected and so here's why here's why i think that it might be okay because the really gross stuff is so absurd it is it is it is it is so i was like here are the parts that made me the most squeamish it's not like a black swan like it's not like about being a dancer in the struggle it's about right though I did cite Black Swan for her uh, so I was like trying to give her um context to to gauge it and so I knew that she had seen Black Swan How'd I was like there are a Black couple Swan? moments um I don't remember okay. <laughs> but I was like there are a couple moments like the fingernail yeah. scene or like in Black Swan when her toes like fuse together mm-hmm. there's some stuff on that level, and I found the that to be the most squeamish parts of the movie. And then there are, you know, the big birthing out of a body yeah. scene, which I don't know where that lands for people. Because to me, that's, like, so outrageous that that isn't, like, like this, like the traditionally scary body horror. So I think based on body horror, that might not... I don't think the body, well, I don't think that the body horror part would be an issue, but it could be grappling with an aging body. Yes. And maybe that is a point that I should mention specifically Um, because I was really only focused on the imagery. So it is relatable. So it is like it's back and forth and like if it's going to cause issues or if it's going to be like, oh, somebody understands. Because like that, I feel like it leans more towards they get it. Then oh, they don't especially get it. because that's how Demi Moore felt. Yeah, that's a good thing to mention to her as well. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know because it's like uh, there is a lot of body horror that feels very um, more personal. Yeah, even like this is a very personal movie, mm-hmm. but the body horror is like uh, sort of weaponized in mm-hmm. universe. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? This feels very different to me from a lot of the body horror we saw coming out of the 80s. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, no, maybe not. Maybe I'm trying to think. I, do, I think I, I think that you have a point here. I'm trying to round it out and I'm trying to think about how. how um, I feel like it's like mm, the difference is it's not. I mean, there is like gross parts that are just gross. Um, but it's not, it's about, I don't know. Women have weird bodies. I don't know. know, So like, (laughs) that's the whole thing is like, I feel like other body horror and I don't want to be like, it's directed by men. So they don't understand, but it is not like, it doesn't have, there was something, there was something specifically I was going to say, and I'm struggling with it. Um, like it feels like it understands. I don't know. Like it yes, feels like yes, it, yes, yes. Like this has like a pointed thesis. Yeah, and it's not like look at this gross shit. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, there are some points like I did not need to see Dennis Quaid um, gobbling them. <laughs> I know. Uh, I know so I'm going to keep going back even... to that, but that's like there are parts of this that I'm like that is the most grotesque thing I've ever seen in my life. But it wasn't a point that it was like 
I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then I was like, I <laughs> have never seen that before, and I never want to see that again. No, thank you. But I was impressed oh, I was that like, they went there. Round two. I want to um, watch it one more time. I was like, time. what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? But, like, it just feels very intentional. Like, everything feels very intentional about it. And, like, the thing about, I, I don't know. And, like, I was talking to... um I was talking to Ryan the other day and he was like, well, you always say how you hate being a woman. And I was like, I don't think you understand what our bodies do. Like yeah. our bodies do fucked up weird stuff all the time. All the time. And it's just like how we exist. And, and we so just have to be there. And so much of it is there. minimized. Yeah. And like. Like even in this movie, they do a great scene where, uh, it's the final transformation into Gollum. So not the final transformation. It's the Gollum transformation. Yeah. And uh, Sue is like bleeding as she goes into the bathroom to uh, switch. And her boyfriend comes to the door. There's like a trail of blood in front of the door. And he's like, oh, are you in a bad mood? Because it's that time of the yeah. month. Like, First of all, no, something much worse is happening. Yeah. Second of all, that also is bad, and I don't appreciate the tone that you're using. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, women's bodies suck sometimes. Yeah, women's bodies suck. And like, this is a movie that's not, that is like, it's not a love letter to women's bodies. It's like, our bodies are fucked up, guys. Like, we don't. Yeah. We try to talk about it sometimes. I talk about it all the time. <laughs> Maybe not on this podcast, but I'm pretty open about all my struggles. Um, yeah. But, like, at the end of the movie, the most relatable character was the end. And I was like, yeah, that's what I feel I like. That's me. I know. I know. I was like, that's me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, God. okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm spinning around. Like, this is me. Yeah, this is, like, this I get it. <laughs> like, maybe, maybe this is just, like, a love letter to women. And we're... So I agree. You should recommend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that there's another layer to it. I think it's not just um I don't even know if it's a love letter so much as an understanding letter, like a feel you letter. It's like a it's an I feel you letter. Yeah. And at the same time, it's like um shit's fucked. Uh, shit's fucked. It's a it's an admonishment of the male gaze mm. and uh like a a highlighting of how the male gaze is like insidious and gets inside yeah. of us. And like, I, so this is why I was saying us commenting on how great Demi Moore looked is part, part of the of experience the of the movie yeah. is because she does look incredible, but because she is in this industry surrounded by men constantly asking for younger, hotter, yeah. she can't see that in herself. She also only values herself and other women for their youngness and their hotness and so it becomes this like ever inward spiraling like feedback loop that happens and I think that this movie represents that in a really interesting way and I think that the end especially <laughs> we have come to I think we have, we have come to, to the to, end we have come, we to, have the come end. to the end <laughs> So where we left off in the plot description was Sue has killed Elizabeth. Sue is now, her body is deteriorating um, when she's supposed to be doing the New Year's Eve live television broadcast. So she flees the studio and goes back to her apartment. And uh, one of the other rules of the activator kit, of the, of the substance kit, is that... Um, the first step is you activate and that is an injection that causes your back to split open and for you to birth a beautiful woman. And, <laughs> uh, and the instructions are very clear. You only do this once. This is single use, throw it away. Unfortunately, Elizabeth sparkles and also Sue did not throw this away. So mm -hmm. there's still a little bit left at home. So Sue goes home and is like, I just need a better version of myself. That's it. So she activates again. Oh, God. Oh, oh boy. God. <laughs> oh, God. Wowzers. So you really should have thrown that away. That was not shelf stable, I no, don't think. <laughs> absolutely not. 
<laughs> so she um she was no yolk. She was no yolk. <laughs> she <laughs> So uh she does birth a new a new being mm-hmm. and they call this in the in the movie. You know there are title what cards. What do they call it? Yeah. Um yeah, so there are title cards at uh, I mean, essentially the three acts of the movie. Mm. The first one is Elizabeth. Then we have Sue. It's the <laughs> abomination. Is, uh, <laughs> Mo- Monstero. That makes sense, Monstero. Eliza Sue. Aww. Monstero, Eliza Sue. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. Monstero, because Eliza it is Sue. All the two of them. of them. Yeah. And many other permutations. Something. Yeah. <laughs> Many other boobs. We can say that. Yeah. Lots of boobs in this iteration. Yeah. Um, more than I would say is necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is... I read that um, part of the inspiration was the Elephant Man, David oh, Lynch version. okay. And I can see that. Yeah. Yep. For sure. It is very grotesque. There's like a, a an arm growing out of her back. Mm-hmm. There are the face uh, of Elizabeth, the face of Elizabeth, Grinning, but like can't screaming. shut her mouth even because yeah, it's like, like tied jaw locked back. open. Oof. Oh, oh no, so scary. And uh, her face is like there's a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to describe <laughs> like, it. There's a lot. Yeah, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't really know how better to say it, but oh, here's a good way to describe it. Um, when I went to see it today. And I mentioned this to you when we left the first time. I was like, I want to go again and watch the audience. And so today I was creeping on the people next mm-hmm. to me. And um, when uh, Eliza Sue wakes up on the bathroom floor and stands up and sees herself in the mirror for the first time, she like ducks her head back down. And the guy si- sitting next to me like threw his arms over his head. He was so shocked and appalled. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was mm-hmm. like... Oh, I got so giddy. I was like, you don't even know what's going to happen next, my dude. For the entire, <laughs> from that moment on, my jaw was just on the floor. Like, I, I couldn't, I was, like, I was like, what, 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 what is happening? What is happening? So, oh God, we've got this grotesque monstro, Eliza Sue, who still is on a mission to do this New Year's Eve show. So she puts on her blue frilly gown, yeah. which has to be like Ripped. laced up yeah. because she's much larger now. Mm-hmm. And uh, she, <laughs> we've totally left out the Dorian Gray aspect, the like on the nose Dorian Gray yeah. aspect of this, which is that I'm going to describe it now because it is important to this part. Um, when we first go to Elizabeth's apartment, she's got this giant painting or picture of herself in her like aerobics uh, get up from like years ago when she quote unquote was young and hot. And uh, as she gets frustrated with this situation, she like throws a thing at it and it shatters the grass, uh, the shatters the glass. And then later Sue drags it somewhere in the house to hide it away. And um, that is important now because Eliza Sue is so ashamed of her own face that she goes and cuts out the young Elizabeth face from this picture and super glues it to her face Mm -hmm. and then applies lipstick to the smiling Elizabeth Sparkle um, mask that she's now wearing and then goes to the studio And this is another (laughs) incredible thing. She gets there and like stagehands are like, where have you been? been waiting for you. Everybody is waiting. (laughs) I'm like, I need to tell what's going on here. Okay. Okay. Like, how how are you not, how are you not reacting to this? (laughs) And some of it is like um, a hallucination, right? She has this like waking dream of people. Um, adoring her in the hallway as she walks to the stage but realizes that there's nobody actually there. She does go on stage though. Yeah. And goes up to the microphone and because of her new shape of her face and mouth 
she cannot speak very clearly. And so this part of the movie has subtitles, which immediately puts it into like, like silent movie oh, yeah. horror feelings. Like it's got this old school, old classic movie monster. I mean, it feels like like an early adaptation of Frankenstein, oh, almost yeah. the way this is done. Um, and it felt, I was going to say Italian, but I guess it feels French since the <laughs> creator is French. That's a good point. Good point. <laughs> um, so she's trying to like welcome everybody to the show and it just goes further off the rails. Yeah. So the mask falls off, which metaphor, and the audience like one by one people start standing <laughs> and just pointing and screaming yeah. like like not even words yet just pointing and screaming and she keeps responding with it's me it's just me, it's just me. i'm the same <laughs> but before things really pop off well she yeah i guess as things pop yeah, off as things pop off is this the scene things that you're out. referencing? Things pop out. Things burn. Things pop out. Things. Yeah. Yeah. So she makes sort of a retching noise from mm -hmm. her Side? speak mouth, oh, okay. from, from her mouth mouth. Mm -hmm. And then there's a different area that births. A boob. <laughs> a boob. Just one. Just a boob. A singular Just boob. Just one. One single a boob. boob. Attached by umbilical cord, mm -hmm. and it drops and just hangs. Yeah, in the light. What a moment! What, what? a moment! What a I moment. have never experienced anything like that. Never thought I would. Nope. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> that moment, I was like, "This is a perfect movie. This is disgusting. Yes. <laughs> this is a perfect like, movie." Ten out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> I could not. I I am. I was like nudity. Never. I never thought would make a movie. But damn, this boob, no. this singular boob, so has important. turned it all around. <laughs> and what I especially loved about this part. So you mentioned the topless ladies mm -hmm. earlier saving Sue when her teeth have just oh, come out of yeah. her face. They are on stage. They're like showgirls. They've got the like no boobs. Or sorry, no, no tops, all boobs, <laughs> all boob, no tops, so much like jewelry. Uh, and they're sort of, they're just like show must they're go like, on. I don't know. Like they've, I'm here. I don't know where they, to go. <laughs> yeah. They're just sort of like making eyes at each other. But here, when she, when she births a boob, a woman covers her daughter's eyes in the audience not like a all one of the, boob not a single not boob. a one boob <laughs> everything up to this I point mean, i mean i don't know fine. if i've ever seen anything as disgusting as that but like <laughs> sure but one boob. just one boob it will terrorize the child <laughs> not the monster that's in front of him but that one boob i just think it's so funny that Mom would be fine with daughter seeing all of these women be objectified on oh, stage yeah. and presented just for their tits. But then the one boob. <laughs> but then the one boob is the problem. <laughs> I do understand that it is yeah, trouble. It, it would be trouble. Yeah, it was as an very. It, I was like, I don't think the thought, the thought that had to go in her head to create that. To like yeah. be like, this is what we should do. I don't know whose idea it was, but holy shit. Holy shit. What <laughs> demented brain was like, this is a good idea. And I was like, it was because it was. I've never seen anything like that. Never expected <laughs> to see anything like that. That is like a wholly new experience, which I never thought I could have. As someone yeah, who has novel. seen so many fucking movies, like right? that was the first time I was like, whoa, that's new. That is <laughs> Brand oh. new. That <laughs> is new. Very that new. feeling is why I keep describing this movie as delightful. Oh, like, it I just can't. brought me so much joy and <laughs> glee simply because it is so surprising and inventive. Mm -hmm. And I also think that that's such a perfect – so it's just so perfect, right? Because Elizabeth tries to make – the better version she substances herself to get mm -hmm. the better version of herself and she get 
she gets this beautiful woman with the perfect boobs Mm. and the perfect butt, the whole package. And then when she goes to do it to herself and we get the like copy of a copy situation, the better version is a boob. It's like, let's just cut to the chase. This is what the world wants. They they like your boob. Here's your boob. Here's the boob. (laughs) Oh, what a treat. And friends. It keeps going. That's not even. It's not. It is not. (laughs) Oh, what a delight. So audience is yelling, pointing, screaming. Somebody says something like, you're a monster. Mm -hmm. The audience starts jumping on stage and pushing Eliza Eliza Sue around in like a like a kickball (laughs) or like a tether ball. Like we're just going in circles, pushing her in like across the the group and she's just getting ping ponged back and forth until somebody swipes at her head, which explodes in a fountain of blood. Everybody gets splattered with it. And a new head grows where the old one was. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) And doesn't doesn't she get her arm cut off? And then it just... That arm bleeds more than any <laughs> blood can bleed in all of bleeding. Well, because she's just she's substituting. Regenerating. She's just dividing, yeah. dividing, dividing. There's blood everywhere. But it's There's like, blood at everywhere. first, you're like, she spins around. And you're like, okay, she's going to be out of blood. It goes no. on for the <laughs> longest on. time. I, like, I didn't think. And it, like, it doesn't get to a point where you're like, oh, this needs to. Like, it doesn't get dull no it just gets more shocking as it keeps going (laughs) you're just like how but how (laughs) like even if i was a special effects person and i was blowing blood out of it how is that much blood capable of even like even if they had a tank (laughs) under the stage that was the entire (laughs) stage like how is there that much blood that's just continuing to generate and spray and everyone's screaming? And it's just like, it's like, uh, I have never, I have never seen that. No. And we've seen movies where there's been like blood raining down Tons on people. Of blood. We've seen yeah. movies where there's like people covered in blood all the time. But yep. this, this, this was a masterpiece. It was astonishing i think i read that they used thirty thousand gallons yeah, of blood for and fucking a sure fire hose oh my a god fire hose <laughs> checks out checks out totally checks holy out. shit yeah it checks out one thousand percent checks out and there are just such like beautiful shots in this part like like we've got the the in-universe story mm-hmm. that's happening and then the camera is is treating it like it is the show like this is a Mm -hmm. dance like we get these shots that are like look at this elegant choreography but she's just spinning in circles fire hosing blood blood at everybody (laughs) it's so good it is perfection so then (laughs) she leaves she leaves the studio um and as she's walking down the sidewalk here, I didn't notice this in the in the first viewing, but I did on this one. So um, in Sue's apartment, she had uh, roses from Dennis Quaid that said, oh, yeah. uh, they'll love you, break a leg. Mm-hmm. And, as, and when I saw that on the second watch, I was like, does she break her leg? Oh, the, does she break her leg In the blood the scene? Yes, as she's walking down the sidewalk, her leg just breaks off and she falls to the sidewalk and dissolves into goo, goo. body goo. <laughs> but there we see Elizabeth's face that was plastered into a permanent scream on Ella Sue's back. Ella Sue, Eliza Sue. Ella Sue, uh, doesn't matter. Yeah. Monstero. <laughs> and she... <laughs> As just this little blob crawls herself along the sidewalk until she gets to her Hollywood star, her Elizabeth Sparkles. (laughs) What a wonderful ending. And then she gets crushed by Zamboni or 
No, she gets sweeper? cleaned up by the street sweeper after she just dissolves into blood. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> and viscera. She does have a really beautiful last moment where she looks up at the stars and she imagines glitter raining down on her and she hears all of her adoring fans. So cute. So good. So sweet. Good for good for her. Yeah. <laughs> the last like 15 minutes of this movie. The pinnacle of cinema. The pinnacle of cinema. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just such joy have not seen a movie that has surprised me as much as this movie like that. Yeah, that was one like halfway through. I was like, oh, I got this. I got it. Down. Same. I know exactly yeah. what's going to happen. But fuck. Holy shit. No, I, not a single punch was yeah. pulled. She fucking went for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. And OK, so. I was reading the Wikipedia page, which is very well fleshed out, which is how you know that people care about this movie. Like this, that does not happen often with the movies that we cover. (laughs) And there were some um, interesting things about the production of the film. And you are going to love this because it goes right back to your forever hypothesis (gasps) that studio interference is what ruins everything. Mm -hmm. So... No, virtually no studio interference yeah, that, that I sense. see evidence of. Yes, uh, like yeah. obvi- clearly. <laughs> well, yeah, if a studio had heard about any of this that was going to happen, they'd be like, "No boob, no blood, no boob," and then you'd be like, "Well, what kind of movie are we making then?" <laughs> right? No, the boob isn't. The boob what, is necessary. We have, to have that. <laughs> the boobs not necessary. The, the boob no, necessary. The boob. <laughs> It's all it's all necessary. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like um, and I don't want to just just read this wiki page while we're recording. So I'm going to try and do this from memory, um, which is that the uh, director, um, Coralie Farge, Mm -hmm. who is also the writer, um, is also producer. It sounds like she started a production company. For this. Oh, thank God. So, right. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> so, so like, glad it did so well. Me too. And I'm glad that it is like making waves. Like I hope. Oh, God. I hope we see so much it. more from her. Yeah. She has made other movies. Most of them are in French. Um, and I don't know if they are like this. But I am interested yeah. to oh, watch, cool. watch more it. of what she has yeah. made. Um, and there's also a huge section on the prosthetics and makeup effects in the Wikipedia, which was such a relief because usually I have to go like crawl around a thousand uh, special effects, people's websites to get like the tiniest morsel of information. So this is really nice. And uh, it here is a thing that I found very interesting. They sort of auditioned um, special effects designers (laughs) to draw up their designs for oh, um, fun. for the Gollum mm-hmm. one and for Monstro. Yeah. And uh they declined most of them because they weren't feminine enough. <gasps> oh. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And so even in these like even in the the Gollum oh good, that is what they're calling it in the Wikipedia. The Gollum? Followed the hunchback Mm. saggy golem Mm -hmm. um yeah so uh uh even that like the super long deflated breasts like yeah oh boy Mm -hmm. and um super long deflated labia i noticed in my second watch oh i did not stare at that no there's a there's a lot to take in (laughs) perfect (laughs) there is a lot to take in in these scenes um yeah i thought it was interesting that they even wanted the monsters to still be very feminine instead of um oh there was a good quote in here a rubber monster for the guys (laughs) i appreciate that i also appreciate that and uh apparently the golem uh, prosthetics and the um, Monstero prosthetics took like seven hours to put on. That and makes then they sense. only had oh totally. Um, and then that means they only have an hour or two for filming, and so they <sighs> yeah. had to do that 
a couple times. Um, and it is Margaret Qualley in the stage I scenes wearing it. the. Yeah, that's yeah, impressive. That is impressive. She said that it was like panic inducing. That's which, fair. Yeah. I would think just so. Just the idea yeah. of it has me sweating. Yep. Um, and so she like thanked the the like prosthesis team for like keeping her calm on uh-huh. set and like trying to make her laugh while she was wearing it. But in that final scene in the fire hose of blood scene, the director wore the suit <laughs> for some of it. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. I feel like that was probably like a cathartic moment. I don't oh, know. I it bet. just feels yeah. like it. Oh, that was just such a I <laughs> yeah. I'm so happy this movie exists. God, me too. God, me too. <laughs> and this, that scene specifically is what I meant by the body horror is like weaponized mm. because that scene is so like, like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> fuck you, audience. Like, what more do you want from me? Mm-hmm. Here, have all of my blood. <laughs> all 32,000 gallons. Was it? Yep. Yeah. I think, yeah. <laughs> some, some amount. Many, 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 many bloods. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. 30,000 gallons 30, of fake blood and a fire hose. God. Oh, and the, the performer, whichever it was, yeah. um, had to be placed on a dolly. Yeah. That checks out. Because <laughs> mobility was so limited when they're yeah. in this. Oh boy. What? I feel like that is, yeah, just a beautiful movie. I like, I. So good cannot get over how movies like we see good movies all the time like i'm not yeah. like this past couple of years has been pretty good for horror we've had a couple Absolutely. like standouts um but this is the one like other movies delight me and they will they will surprise me but this has been the most surprising i think of any movie yeah. i've seen in the last probably 10 years i couldn't think like what was the last movie that that had me like giggling with glee. I feel like mine was barbarian. <laughs> and that's, that's the one I thought I about. But that's the only other one I could think of. And I thought that, that was a standout. And that did not yes. seem like part of the norm. And I think that we both experienced that delight because of the surprise. Mm-hmm. Like both of those movies are like, ha, gotcha. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. I but just this is like I th- I don't I just remember we were both sitting there and I like I had never ha- like my jaw was on the floor and I think I, I was just like this the entire time with my hands on my face being like yeah I don't know what's happening I can't <laughs> like it, it's like one of those things it's like a visceral reaction like your body doesn't know what to do as it's watching it you're like this isn't these aren't things that my eyes take in like I, I don't I don't absorb this but I was like I can't look yeah. at I don't even want to blink. I'm no. afraid I'll miss something. <laughs> so happy this movie exists. So happy about so everyone's happy. performances. Like, am excited to see what comes next. And like, mm-hmm. I'm just so excited to continue to be surprised. God, me too. Yeah. And I am. I want to follow this special effects artist. Yeah. Till the end of both of our days. Yeah. Because. This was incredible. There was clearly so much care and thought put into all of this. Oh, yeah. And, oh, I read that they, like, they finished principal photography, and then they spent another month just doing special effects, like, practical effects stuff, like the birthing scenes and various injection stuff and various, Gross like, transformation stuff. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Great movie. Perfect. It's a perfect film. Yeah. It's a perfect film. If you made it all the way through and you haven't seen it, that's probably because you were afraid of it. If you're a woman, I mean, it's still going to be gross, but you should probably still see it. If you're a dude. I think you should really watch it. You should probably still watch it. I just think every, like, this was just like a gross (laughs) movie, but like, like, there are movies that I think are gross that I'm like, I don't, I wouldn't recommend. Like pointlessly gross. Yeah, but this This one just felt, there's a reason. (laughs) There was a reason. Yeah. This grossness is like a a manifestation of like internalized misogyny yeah. and hatred. Ugh. And not just like ew. Yeah. <laughs> like there's a point yeah. to it. 
Oh boy. Loved it. Just so absurd. So delightful. And so when I went today, I was watching the there were a couple people seated next to me, and I'm pretty sure they were on a date. Oh, and I was ugh. like, uh oh. That was a choice. Hopefully it's not an early date. Hopefully they know each other. Oof. Hopefully. Oof. I don't know. I don't know. I it was like noon though, so maybe I'm misreading it. Maybe it was just a couple of besties at the movies. I'm not sure. But I was I mean, I go at noon. If they yeah, I love going at noon. <laughs> but if they had looked to their right at any point in this movie, and I knew that they wouldn't, because how can you take your eyes away from the screen? They would have just seen me like <laughs> eyes, eyes wide, big like, weird smile on my on? face. <laughs> I genuinely, it was like watching all of their reactions and they like cringed at all the right moments and uh, like viscerally reacted to the golem creature and then the monstro creature. And then when it finally, when the boob happens Mm -hmm. is when they finally were like, oh, we're having fun. (laughs) And then they like are laughing and enjoying it too. Like, I was like, oh, good. You guys, you guys get get it. it." Okay, good. I sort of wondered, there was an older woman who had come in to watch it seated at the bottom of the theater. Third time seeing the movie. It could have been. (laughs) I was, I was like. She was like, this movie's too good. I wanted to like do an audience poll afterward. I wanted to be like, how did, how's everybody feeling? Yeah. (laughs) Do you want to talk about it? There's a coffee place across the street. It was such (laughs) a weird moment when we left too. I was like. And I, we had a couple people in the theater. There was like five or six people in the theater. Not yeah. there was more than that. There we had a decent amount of people, and we were like midday too. But it was yeah, still it was, like that was strange. I was just like, oh, huh. is everyone? Do we all feel <laughs> right? Do we all feel <laughs> like we have changed? Like it feels like we went through a metamorphosis. Like it feels yes. like we all went through something, <laughs> and then we come out as I've different people substanced. at the end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like we're different people. Now. And everyone in that theater with us is a different person. And there were so many people, even today, the, like, people just got up immediately and left. Because they needed to get out and be like, I got to process. Oh. I got to okay, understand that's a good that. point. You and I left and we were like, we didn't, we like didn't say anything. <laughs> like, I was like, we have to <laughs> wait to get to the car. And then we got to the car and we like, I was like, I have to sit for a second and I just got to think about it. And then, like, later yeah. we were like, I think I loved it. And then, like, yeah, it was, like, it was a lot. It was, like, I have not felt like a movie has been so overwhelming, but this movie was, like, mm-hmm. incredibly overwhelming. Yes, I agree. But, and even today on second viewing, I, I think that's a good point that they had to get up and leave the situation to process yeah. elsewhere. That's a more generous read than I had, which was, how are you? I have to sit here for a minute. Yeah. And I knew what was coming. <laughs> they had to go back out into the sunlight to remember that, like... I guess that's fair. There's more oh, than one fair. boob. There's more than There's one more to boob. life than one boob. <laughs> and it's like, or is it just one boob? Is that the meaning? Is that all? Is that what we have? Is that who we are? It's not who we are. But it's who we will we become? It's how we are treated. Oh, damn. And we need to remember that we're two, two boobs. boobs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this is a perfect film mm-hmm. when we do our ratings of 2024 i feel like this is going to be near the top very close to the top we watch we watched a lot of movies and they were all new movies this year yeah and there's still so many coming new movies. out yeah it is spooky season so very excited for nosferatu mm-hmm. i've already seen smile too which we are going to talk about po- hopefully next week Hopefully next week, mm-hmm. if not next week, the week after, yeah, we got to start. We got. We just got to stop promising. Yeah, <laughs> because I can't we be trusted to release them in the correct ep- That's okay. order. <laughs> That's okay. We will watch it at some point, and you guys will hear our opinions on it at some point. Do I don't know. I don't know if I could have any more opinions. On it. <laughs> I know. I, like I, I was like, I don't have anything else to say about it because it's like. I feel like I could keep saying stuff, but it would be the same stuff. But it would yeah, feel yeah. like the the feeling behind it would still exist. So it's like a continuation and a loop. So yeah, yeah. If I kept talking about it, I would just loop around and keep talking about certain things. But great movie. Hope you see it. If you haven't seen it, hope you watch it again. And yes, we will review every movie this woman does for all of time. Mm. 
Um, oh, yeah. This was amazing. I am excited. So I'm so excited to watch our other stuff. Here, Here's my question yeah. for you. Was it scary? I feel like the idea of me versus me could be scary. Like That's horrifying. Yeah. Another yeah. version of me not allowing me to exist. And like if I were split into two and one of like... But you're not split into two. Uh, yeah. But if like I, I wouldn't show kindness to myself and I feel like that would be important. But I, if I was split into two, I wouldn't know because one of them might not be kind. So That's true. that part is scary. The idea and like... I don't know. There is murder in it. So that part's kind of scary. And turning into a giant monster. But I'm not afraid of the monster. The monster isn't oh, what scares no. me. Uh-uh. Becoming the monster is what scares me. Becoming so yeah, the scary. Okay. Not all for scary, but like scary in the sense that like existentially scary. Yeah. 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 How about you? I think I agree. However, I'm not so scared of being murdered by the young hot me. Mm-hmm. I think I'd be like Go on without me. <laughs> Enjoy. I'm scared of one boob. I don't know that I am. Oh, God, I am. That moment. I was just like, what? Wait, explain your fear. Of a boob, a single boob, just being birthed out of something. I think if the boob existed uh-huh. on its own, fine. That's fine. Oh, but yeah, seeing yeah, yeah. it come out of something, that was a completely new moment. And that was like... Completely new. Like, it looked like a baby's head with a nipple on it. And then it was just a boob. And then it was (laughs) just just like, I, that moment, that moment scared me. I, that was a moment that I was like, I do not understand who can think of this and where this comes from. This is a thought that I never thought people would come out with. And this is here. (laughs) And I'm sure that one or two of our listeners are like, I found the thought before. And I'm like, well, you should make a horror movie. Because I would be like, oh my God. Oh my god! Explain your explain your birth of a single boob thoughts yeah. to us. I would love I would love to I hear just, them. Yeah, I <sighs> I think I wasn't scared by that. I wasn't like the boobs gonna attack me. No, no, of course. But it was yeah. like, <laughs> oh, that is a fear that I never had that a boob would come out of an orifice that was hmm. unexpected. I think that I'm trying to imagine. How I would react to that a boob if it happened out in of real you, life. One boob coming out If it comes out, out of, of me, yeah. uh, that's another that's another thing. Yeah. If it comes out of me, I, yes, would be. See, that's how I kind of pictured it. I try to empathize with all them. That's good. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I. Something giving birth to a boob, not scary. Me giving birth to a boob. Me very giving scary. birth to a boob. Very scary. Mm-hmm. Um. However, I was not afraid in that moment in the movie. I was just confused. I was very confused. I was very I was confused. Delighted. <laughs> I was delighted. I was so like childlike wonder. <laughs> I was so excited. That was such a wonderful moment. And I think I think I immediately saw the like, oh, we birthed uh Margaret qualls what is it i've already forgotten her name like dj qualls sue oh <laughs> so, yeah, what? quali that's close <laughs> <laughs> oh we birth margaret quali the world values women mm. on their boobs boobs Boob. are the currency <laughs> and so now we're Don't getting the one boob. Me, boob. like yes yeah. exactly like i was like we're do- we're doing it boob. <laughs> we're, Here we're boob. doing it Here's you can't boob. be mad at me i hear boob I'm here, boob. Oh, oh, you're right. Well, uh, I'm just saying the same thing over and over again. <laughs> this is I the boob it. episode where we talk this about the, the one boob. Episode. <laughs> oh. oh, it's a perfect film. Um, I, yeah, I guess I guess that's our yeah, final thought. <laughs> And we will be back in two weeks to discuss either Smile 2 or Oddity or, you know, we'll find either out. Either or both. Well, or Either or both. Other things. Or other. We're just going to leave it open. Um, <laughs> yeah. So look forward to that. 
we'll we'll see you then. In the meantime, you can find us over on Debut Buddies, another podcast that we co-host with our friend Nate Regolia. It is a podcast about firsts. And you can also find us on social media at No Show Monster. You can email us at no show monster at gmail.com. And in the meantime, nope, I already said that. Yeah. In the meantime, you can have a great day. Have a great day. Yeah. Have happy spookies. Have oh. boobs. Have boobs or boop. Or boop. Or no boob. <laughs> That's okay too. Or no boob. All boob, no boob. One boob. All boob, no boob. Happy Choose spooky. your own spooky boob. boob. Happy spooky. <laughs> Booby spook. <laughs> Booby spook. <laughs>